Hi, uh, my name is Joachim Bolin, and I'm going to tell you how to get from a structure like this tetrahedron drawn in, drawn in uh, Cardano into something that actually looks like a tetrahedron. So the issue is that in Cardano you have to draw all the helices uh, parallel to each other, which is usually not a problem for many structures, but for something like a tetrahedron, you definitely need the helix bundles to uh, be oriented per definition, uh, not parallel to each other. So if you try to convert this and relax it in OxDNA, it will take quite a long time uh, before it actually uh, forms something look like, looking like a, a tetrahedron. Also, if you try to draw something like this uh, manually in um, Ox in Cardano, you can see that it's kind of a mess, <laughs> and it's a bit tricky to actually make sure that all connections are drawn properly. Uh, so then you can also use this workflow to just inspect your structure in 3D and see, uh, well, ma making sure that everything is connected as it should be. Uh, so the first step to get from Cardano to OxDNA would be to use this TAC OxDNA uh, toolset, which has lots of nice scripts from going going from different formats to OxDNA and sometimes back again. Uh, there are some well, basically first of all, there is this uh, this structure that I had has been generated by a Talos script, so I actually do have a can do um, file as well that already contains the 3D structure. But so far, the script that does the conversion doesn't really handle single strands properly uh, and therefore it's still in beta uh, and not really usable uh, in all applications and in many cases you might not have the luxury of a can do file you only have the can nano file uh, for some old structure or something that has well been designed manually there uh, and therefore you need to follow along this procedure so the first step is basically to uh, find your, uh, your JSON Cardano file. I have it here. And then we select the hexagonal lattice, since it's drawn on a hexagonal lattice, and we click Generate. This might take a min few minutes for larger structures, but this is quite a small, uh, small design, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, just there we go. Uh, one thing you could do is to view the output directly, uh, but this will launch a slightly outdated version of Oxview. Um, so to make sure that you actually have the latest version and to um, well, make sure that you have a downloaded version, uh, we, we download it instead. You also see here in the output that it does uh, complain about the backbone distance being very long uh, for some uh, nucleotides, which is another uh, indication that we need to do some relaxation. But if I download this, it will give me a um, zip file, and I can just extract these two files uh, somewhere I want to save them. So let's say here. So we have them there, and then we can just drag and drop them into our OxDNA viewer. Uh, so if you go to saltgroup.github.io uh, slash OxDNA viewer, you will get the uh, most uh, recent version Catnana, uh, of OxView all the time. Here we can click uh, the numpad to directly go to, um, to this top view. Uh, you can also look at, at it from the side uh, or use the mouse to, uh, to move around manually. Uh, that takes it off for you. And from here, uh, let's reset again. There we go. You could, well, you, you need to separate into clusters to say which components should be, uh, should belong together uh, as rigid bodies. Uh, one way you could do that is to manually select uh, boxes by uh, this box selection tool and choose selection to cluster. Uh, but the lazier way is just to do uh, automatic clustering, which for a small structure at least runs pretty quick uh, using this uh, DP scan algorithm 
that looks for spatial separation uh, between the nucleotides. And then when we have our six clusters, uh, we go, well, first of all, <laughs> we can do edit and mouse transformation. So we can translate and rotate this piece manually. Uh, but there is also a lazy way, which is the rigid body dynamics that I added, uh, which is basically just a rigid body. Um, well, there is <laughs> dynamics. There is a spring force in between each cluster uh, bond that holds it together. And then between each of the clusters, there is also a, um, a repulsion force that makes sure that they stay a bit apart. So it's a quite simple code, uh, but very efficient in trying to get a structure like this. Sometimes it's rearranged opposite, so you get it inside out or uh, maybe a bit entangled. Uh, and then you still can do the manual transformations to get it into a better uh, configuration before reapplying uh, cluster dynamics to, um, to the structure. Uh, let's not do selection, by clicking S. Uh, and then we can move around and see see that we have a nice freely structure. You may notice that the bonds are still quite extended. This is to make sure that you don't have any uh, overlaps between the clusters, since it doesn't really take uh, rig uh, any. Um, it doesn't have any excluded volume per se. It's just keeping the centers of mass uh, at a distance. But if you want to get them a little bit closer, we could actually go into the code with Control Shift K on uh, Firefox, which launches uh, the web console, and then you do rigid. Oh, rigid cluster simulator, uh, and here we have a list of the different uh, constants that are uh, implemented. And if you choose to change either of those, uh, say the repulsion constant, if you set that to 100 instead, uh, then you will get a much more um, tight structure that will relax even faster in OxDNA. So that's it. Uh, from here you can just go and download the output files, uh, OxDNA files, uh, to whatever name you want to. Um, and you can also generate videos uh, and do extra edits and whatever you like. So I hope that helps someone uh, and thank you for tuning in. See you.